Hello, happy Wednesday. I'm really excited to be back doing some Power Up Live conversations. Um, took a little hi hiatus because of the holidays um, and then just getting back on track with January. But I'm excited to um, start having some conversations with fellow colleagues within the uh, industry of advertising, marketing, and media. I have to say, I've actually really missed doing this. It's fun. It gives me a reason to put on makeup <laughs> uh, and get ready to be on camera, which is really fun after many days of being home inside alone, um, which is why I'm excited today to talk a little bit about burnout. Um, you know, I think yesterday was Groundhog's Day. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like every day is exactly the same. Um, and it's exhausting. So we want to talk a little bit about ways we can uh, notice when burnout is happening, uh, things that we can do, whether it's ourselves or maybe people we work with or our teams. Uh, and we want to also talk about, um, you know, what can we do about it? How can we, ch you know, change things up? So I'm excited today. Uh, Kelly Burke will be joining me. In fact, uh, I see her joining right now. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about burnout. So we'll wait for a second. I can see that she waved and here she comes. And we're connected. Yep, there I am. Yay! <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. It's exciting to see you. Yeah, it is. It's a nice break in the week, isn't it? It is, exactly. So I kind of just set up a little bit that we we're going to be talking about burnout, which I think mm -hmm. is appropriate given that we just had Groundhog's Day yesterday and yes. every day <laughs> seems very similar. Yep. But before we go into kind of that, I just wanted to, you know, introduce you. Um, and I always say this when I do these conversations. One thing I love about this business, um, especially in advertising, it's a really small world and um, and I love the position I'm in now because I have an opportunity to go and look and talk to people who I maybe worked with in other capacities and get to know them a different way. So I remember many times calling on you when you were at Optum <laughs> Media. I wouldn't yep. be surprised if I called on you when you were at Beyond Interactive. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's because I was, you know, so I was the seller. She was the buyer. She was the, the head of media at some amazing uh, agencies <laughs> in San Francisco. Yeah. And it's funny because I see so much of the similarities in our past is of how we've, you're super involved in SF Big. I'm yeah. super involved in Think LA. Yep. Um, you know, we both have this wanting to help others and to mentor and to coach and to, yeah. you know, just provide people with more knowledge more ways to you know connect and to grow their skills so i love all of that but i'd love to hear from you a little bit about your background um, and kind of how you got to where you are today sure yeah um like you said i've been uh, in the advertising industry for you know pretty much an entire career until <laughs> i stopped and started a new one um and like you said i just loved our industry. I still love our industry. I can't get enough of it, even though I'm technically not in it. Although I still do some media and marketing um, consulting, but I never really wanted to be away from it. I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I needed to figure out, you know, what, what kept me in this industry for so long, if I wasn't, you know, always enjoying what I was doing and um, is the people. Is yeah. the people and the ability to manage a group and I think for me I just felt that having having a group to manage and um, train throughout their careers like coming in as assistants or even you know coming into like I came into um, Opti as you know a senior person so even taking some of the senior folks who were under me and like you know, helping them be the greatest leaders that they can be. And that's really what I loved. And so stopped, became a coach, became a trainer. And this is what I've been doing. And it's I exciting. love it. And it's cool because this is an industry that I do think needs, you know, this ability to have coaching one-on-one, -on -one, 
I mean, I look back and I think how many times I would have loved to have had a coach to help me through some of the stress that is involved in our industry. I too love it. I think it's an amazing industry. It's so important to a business, how a business is going to grow and scale. I think what's interesting though, and I think you and I talked about this, and I see this all the time in conversations I have with other people. I see it on Fishbowl. I see it on Reddit. People just getting so burnt out with this yeah. industry. Yeah. And Absolutely. I know you had seen somewhere that it's the number two industry or tell yeah. me a little bit about your sort of point of view on the burnout. Yeah. So Deloitte did, um, did some research. I, I It was like pretty early on um, in the COVID, you know, lockdown situation. So I think it was spring of last year. And the ad industry, what the percentage was 73% of the ad industry shows burnout symptoms, only behind the tech industry, which was 74%. And how interlocked are they too? Yeah, Yeah, it's, it's so true. And you know, what you said before is you would love to have a coach. The thing is, and you know, and it's, I don't know if it's dirty little secret or not, or even maybe not even a secret, but it's a rare agency that actually invests in their people. I know there, you know, I've been, I worked at a lot of agencies and it's a rare occasion to actually get formal training. And yeah, which I think is insane. Like everything, like look at Rashad Debakawala. The one thing he always says, yeah. learn, 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 invest yep. in yourself. I just saw this great article from Warren Buffett. Your number one investment right now is to invest in yourself. And that's, yeah. And that's, you know, whether it's, you know, we provide obviously that the NAM Collective paid courses, Mm -hmm. both, you know, hard skills, like how to actually do stuff in advertising, marketing, and media. We're also adding a lot of soft skills. So we've got leadership, we've got happiness course coming out. But (laughs) I know negotiation. Interesting is, is that right now, especially people are being laid off. Yeah. If you do have people within your agency, maybe you can't give them the raise this year. Right. But you know what you could give them is access to education, access yeah. to trainings, access to things like Athenium Collective. Whether You know, there's so many ways you can create this incredible, yeah. in, you know, opportunity to give people something to grow. Uh-oh. Did I lose her? I think so. We'll wait for her to come back. I am not sure what happened, but those things do happen. Um, it's nice to see our friends from Lavima here. Hi, Dina. Nice to see you as well. Here she is. She's back. And so oops, sorry. Lost her for a minute. I got booted out. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> no, it's probably the Wi-Fi. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, all those kind of things happen. Um, so anyway, we were talking about just in general, the industry mm-hmm. um, yeah. and this need for training. Yeah. And and it, even even if you you are at a company that doesn't offer training, seek it out yourself even know yourself as a manager that you're just not the training type. That's okay too. Like ask someone else who is the training type or, or just be honest about it. Even just that little piece of it is like, you know, really helpful when it comes to learning. Absolutely. So when we talk about burnout, let's talk Mm -hmm. a little bit about how do you know that you're suffering? from burnout? And how do you know if your team is suffering from burnout? Like, what are some signs that people would exhibit? Yeah. So first, um, I want to say like this, this topic just came up because I manage an advisory council for a key technologies, and it's all made up of advertising people. And when we started talking about adult, I mean, adults, um, topics that would make sense for them for a workshop. Mm hmm. Burnout is what came up. It was burnout and how to manage a team virtually. Those were like, yeah, yeah, those were the top two that it was just like, you know, screaming for help. And, you know, you know yourself and you know when you start going down that path. Um, But just being aware of it when it's happening and not chalking it up to, 
oh, I just worked late last night or, you know, whatever the circumstances, you really, really start to know those symptoms. I mean, and it's as easy as a headache, your sleep patterns are off, um, muscle aches, stomach aches. Um, for me, mine was always um, the dread that Sunday, the dread with Monday coming. And most people get it Sunday night before they go to bed. I used to wake up on Sunday morning and just feel like doom that Monday yeah. was a day away. I mean, that's a huge indicator I, I, that I like that you're, just, <laughs> you're just done. So yeah. um, that's just, that's huge. And there's, there's, different, um, there's different levels of it, obviously. Um, but one of the things that is fascinating is that burnout stems, like when you, when you get to the origins, burnout stems from something that happened that's good. And it's the bad behavior that happens after it that leads to burnout. So it could be you want a new account, you got promoted, you know, your clients love the presentation that you did. All of these are really great things. How you then deal with that is what will dictate your burnout level. So you get a promotion, everybody takes this, puts it on themselves and says, I've got to show them that they made the right decision. And so you start working a little bit later, then a little yeah. bit later, start working weekends. You start putting work deliverables ahead of your friends and family. That's a huge one right there. Yeah, I could and, see that. And justifying it. Yeah. And we, and we all tell ourselves, well, we have to. We have to. Like, there's no, there's no choice. And I can hear myself saying that. I don't have a choice. I, oh, I know. It's like the expectations you have just get notched up a whole nother level. And then, and the thing is so much of those expectations are what we put on ourselves. It's yep. like no one's saying for us to do that. We create this no. whole story in our head no. about all the ways that we have to do it. I remember managing people and I could tell certain things, the cynicism, you know, <laughs> you'd see a lot of the, like the negativity and cynicism would grow yeah. when oh, people, gosh. you could see them being burned out. I could see that, um, you know, even the, you know, the deliverables, like it was, yep. they, they weren't either as good or they weren't as often or, you know, and those were like little signs that was like, hey, you know what, something's not right here. How yep. do we kind of dig in? And, and I think there's a difference between sort of burnout and just being tired versus being depressed, right? There's like a whole like, uh, totally, a, a, like a, a a range of what that looks like. Yeah. So um, that that it's like succumbing to the burnout. That's that's the depression, and you've pretty much gone through like six different levels before you get, or five different levels before you get to just succumbing to it, right? And, you know, it's like I said, it starts with the excitement, but then it's like pushing through. I got this. Let me just push yeah. through this, you know, um, you know, and, and then it goes on to these other levels. And, you know, one thing is blame. Start looking out for blame. Are you starting to blame, um, even if it's your burnout, on mistakes you've made? If you've noticed anyone on your team starting to blame others or their lack of X, Y, Z for the mistakes that they're making, pay attention to that. That's a huge scream for help. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. And I think also when you start seeing people who have a, even I recognize them myself when I have anxiety, right? When I start getting really wrapped up in the stories in yeah. my own head is when I know, oops, something's happening. Yeah. I've got to stop and analyze what is causing this. Cause most of it is definitely around sort of the burnout, the setting my expectations too high that I'm uh -huh. never going to be able to achieve them. And, and it just, you know, you keep spiraling around that. Yeah. Um, it's funny because, um, the funny thing in all of this is I, I need to continually take my own advice. Um, I sometimes I feel like a doctor who smokes. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I'm telling everybody this is what they need to do for their own health. And then I catch myself, you know, doing the burnout. And it's funny, the first workshop that we did of burnout, um, 
with, I did it with another coach, Karen Flynn, who was also part of the advertising industry. She lives in Vancouver. And as we were going through the workshop and she said to everybody, well, let, let us show you how, you know, let us show you what you're talking about. Kelly, and she asked me a question about burnout and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I have not been listening to my body. I have not been listening to myself. So um, it's a constant reminder, like don't beat yourself up because you let yourself get there. I preach it every day and I still find myself doing it very no. recently. <laughs> I believe it's so funny because I just went through this thing where every morning I would wake up and I would wake up to the thought, oh my God, I have so much to do. Yeah. And yeah. that is like the worst way to start the day because you've already started like in this sort of point of view of, oh shit, I'm not going to be able to get it all done. Yeah. And then again, high expectations, right? Yep. You don't meet them. And then you burn yourself out because you've just created a cycle. So I'm trying to wake up and say to myself, today, I have everything I need to get what I need to get done. Yeah. You know, like a more like positive, I'm still working on it, but it's just it's interesting <laughs> yeah. how it is a constant battle. So let's talk a little bit about what do you think are some things that people can do? Yeah. So but let's start first personally, and then let's talk about teams because a lot of people that we, you know, uh, work with are leaders or managers um, of big teams or small teams. Yeah, so I think so for yourself, obviously all, all the things that, that we just said, all the physical cues, you know, um, and then it, is it, you know, whether it's the headache, the sleeping, the starting to miss things, starting to blame, all those little behaviors, you know, you, you'll start picking up on it. And, you know, all I can say is please don't let it get, you know, to the end. Yeah. Because the complacency is, I think, the most dangerous piece of it. Because you just don't care. You give up and you just don't care. And you don't care about the quality of your work. And you don't care if you're missing deadlines. And you don't care what your boss says. And you don't right. care about the new client because, you know, they looked at you sideways. Whatever right, it right, is. Right, 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 yeah. So, you know, it, it's all of that. And it's hard, especially when you are the boss. Or like you, you're working for yourself. Um, because you don't have anyone to bounce things off of. So you, you literally have to either bounce it off yourself <laughs> or find someone to just confide in. Yes. Well, and that works. That's why you have to have a network of friends and people that you, you know, are, you have a confidant that you can yeah. talk to or a coach. Yeah. I mean, obviously Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a coach. I mean, I cannot, I cannot say enough how helpful a coach is and I'm not just saying that because I'm a coach like my first coach and I've had a few she just she just changed my world yeah she absolutely changed my world it was like the awakening that I needed just to get out of my own way and yeah and I think for people who don't know like to me that what I love about a coach versus like a therapist is that a coach helps you figure out how to move forward versus yeah. spending all the time in the past like I'm like all about okay what's happening and how do I fix it? Right. How do I move forward? And so, just that and accountability I, piece too. Like I will fail myself over and over and over, but if someone asks me to do something or I have to do something because I told my coach I would do it, oh, I'm going to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Which so what do you recommend terrible. for people who are suffering from burnout right now? So like I said, listen to the signs. Um, you need to, and I just, um, I wrote a, um, I was a guest writer yesterday for the SF Big um, Tuesday Talk new newsletter. Oh, thank you. And it was all about Groundhog Day, which, you know, kind of, like you said, um, plays into all this burnout. Um, you have to take breaks. And by the way, we'll talk about the team, but you also have to lead by example. Yeah. You cannot affect change if you're not doing it yourself. So I know, like, I'm saying take breaks. I'm saying... Um, don't schedule meetings back to back to back. I'm saying uh, set boundaries. And I can, as a media person, an ex-media person, I feel the anxiety rising in me for anyone to tell me that. Cause it's like, yeah. you don't know, you don't know. I can't do that. How, how yeah. do I not have back to back meetings? It is in your control. You just have to stand up and set those boundaries. So for, I, and I don't know what it was like on the sales side, but for being at so many agencies, the thing is, is like I said, there's no, 
there's no official training, but you're basically being trained by the person who just who left that job. Yes. Yeah, you know? or who manages you, yeah. Right, so they probably just, and usually it's the person who just got promoted. You know, so they're a level, they're a level above you. And so if they've been taught to do some things certain ways, then that's how they're gonna teach you. So um, in coaching, we call this a designed alliance. And it's before we even have a relationship, we talk about what this re relationship is gonna be. And I find it so important to do that in any work situation. Have the tough talk, even yeah. if it's as simple as, I'm not a morning person. Just knowing that. And um, one of my old colleagues, and she knows who she is, if she's listening, um, when we used to work together, I mean, when I first met her the first week, she said, I'm not a morning person. Right. And so give me time to get through my coffee. Don't be asking me stuff because, yeah. you know, I'm not a morning person. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for not making it. Oh, am I frozen? Good. There you go. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening, but you're frozen and I can't okay. tell. So anyway, so it's those little things. Um, set boundaries. Again, I'm getting my, the anxiety. You don't yeah. have to say I only work from nine to five. Yeah. But let them know, like, I have a family or I need, I need to take a spin class to, to function properly. Yeah. And, and that's one of the coping things that you also need to realize about yourself. Are you someone who copes with, with stress on an emotional level, meaning like you need to talk it out with someone? Um, are you like a problem solver? So when you have stress, you need to like put a plan together. You need yeah. to figure it out and, and like get something in, you know, in writing. Um, or are you a physical person? Do you, need, do you need to go for a run? Knowing that about yourself, Absolutely. Hugely important. And then you have this discussion. And, and even if you've been in the same position for five years, what it's a fun reset. Hey, yeah, you know, exactly. we never really talked about how we work together, how we should work together. I'm going to tell you some things like when things go sideways, here's how I would like to, I'd like to have things resolved. You know, Give me a day or two, whatever it is, whatever yeah, your thing yeah. is, but have that, have that frank conversation. And um, be willing to do it. A lot of people are afraid to have those conversations, yeah. but it makes everyone's life better when you do that. Like it's, I think yeah. it's so funny because I've been, we just had this goal setting uh, conversation uh, yeah. with my team and we were talking about, we all feel this yes, yes, yes. We, you mm -hmm. know, like we always want to say yes. Yeah. And we realize that we have to start learning to say no. Yeah. Like there is the power in the no and figuring out what are those boundaries? What are those things that we have to do in order to keep ourselves being able to kind of move forward? And that sometimes is, is the no. Yeah. Like, I can't do this right now. Right. Or I, you know, and, and figuring out on your schedule. Um, I was talking to some friends who work at agencies who have finally just went in and, and blocked out some time. Like even if it's a half an hour to go walk their dog or, yeah. you know, you or, have to. You, yeah, exactly. Or I, you know, I want to have di dinner with, you know, my family. And the, the thing right. is now that people are working from home, there's no separation. Exactly. And that is the hardest thing yeah. for people to deal with. Yep. There's no separation. And there's this, you know, with, with COVID and working from home, there's this um, lack of control. Like it, it's this feeling like nothing really is in, in your control. You don't really know what's going on with your company unless, unless you're, you know, in senior leadership. You don't know if you're going to have a job. You know, this is like a really, really difficult time for anybody. And yeah. just that unknown adds to all of it. Yeah, because you don't have the walking down the hall and, 
hearing yeah. people talking or overhearing things that are going on. So God knows what stories you can make up in your own head. <laughs> right. And that's why you need to have those check-ins with people. If you start noticing something like, you know, oh, Lisa was kind of short with, with me today. That's weird. That's not usually her demeanor. Don't chalk that up. Yeah. Address that. Like that's on yeah. you. That's on you. Even if it's like, you know, you're an assistant planner and your supervisor like changes, like help dig into that, you know, figure it out. And the lead by example thing uh, is so important because if you're like, I remember I used to always say to my team or for the most part, get out of here. The work's going to be here tomorrow as I hunkered down. Yeah. That's not good. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not good. And then I've had so many, you know, planners like come into my office crying because they had so much work and they've told themselves that every single thing that's on their plate is priority. Yeah. And that's, what's going to happen if you don't talk to anybody else. So I was like, what can I pull off my, off your plate, you know? And they think it's nothing. No, that's, you don't have to do that right now. Yeah. No, get that out of there. What's that? Oh, that can be, you know, so it's, it's that the conversation is, is so big. I can't be, you know, this horse dead n enough. It's, it's really it's important true. to have these conversations. And I love how you just mentioned that it's on both sides. So yeah. like, you know, if I'm working in a team environment, whether it's a teammate, whether it's my boss, um, and as a manager, noticing it amongst the team, I think is so important because I think so much of the problems that we have is A, the expectations we put on ourselves, mm -hmm. and then the stories we make up about the encounters <laughs> we have with other people. Yeah. Yeah. If I had known that early on in my career, I, know. I would have been totally, I mean, I could think of so many th times that I've stressed over things that were just the way it was <laughs> my own thinking yeah. about something that happened yeah and creating the stories around what does that mean what does that mean about me what does it mean about them yep. what does it mean about the work i'm doing when all i had to do was ask yeah you know I, there when was you said this did i took it as this or whatever like right those kind of conversations you know we can have but i think when for me when i was you know starting out i didn't feel like i could ask that for whatever yes. reason, I felt right. like the hierarchy of working in a, a corporation and a big company, I didn't feel that, you know, at first, eventually I got to the place where, you know, we had a lot of very frank conversations at many yeah. companies. And I think it really depended on the corporate environment as well. So I, as leaders, as managers, we have to be the ones to create the environment where people feel safe. Yeah, having conversations about, you know, especially when those things start happening that you can tell are going to spin into that, that burnout that you mentioned yep. when you just give up. Well, and it's funny, um, I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard this at some point. <laughs> um, you know, it used to be the, the saying was like, as the younger kids were coming in, kids, um, this was years ago, it'd say, oh, those damn millennial, they're so entitled. Yes. And you keep saying that out loud and you're just making this blanket statement about people in a certain age range right. and you're saying it out loud and you're having other, every other person hear it. And maybe they're just doing what I'm telling them to do. Maybe they're just setting the bar where it should be set. Maybe they're being honest about what their personal life means to them Yeah, <laughs> at work, you know? It's, yeah, it's, and I think that's how you define entitlement. Like, we're talking about boundaries. We're talking about, again, everyone's individual, so it's hard to talk about. Right, whole, yes, it's hard to But you're that. right. Like, you know, again, it's the word. The word entitlement sounds like I deserve all of this Yeah. without having to do anything. But right. truthfully, what it really, for them, is it's about I am a whole person, and I have things that I want in balance. Right, how nice. And I don't want to give all of myself to just this job, right? right? Yeah. I want room to do more. And the truth is I would be better at my job right? if I have this ability to do other things that make me sort of this whole person. Yeah. I mean, how many managers 
did you witness who, when they had a new person come in, a new entry level person come in, the rule was they're not allowed to leave until their boss leaves. Oh, I hate that one. <laughs> and it was like, and it just goes on generations of generations. Oh, it's the worst. Yes, exactly. Why? So sitting there. Why? You know, maybe you, didn't, you finished everything, but you'd have to sit there and tell the boss that. Or what I always did not like was the weekend. Yeah. When, I mean, you know, you had the boss who was blowing you up all weekend long. Yeah. Boundaries. And it's so funny. I, it used to bug me. Now it's interesting as a, as having my own business, I love to work on the weekends now. Yeah, me too. It's weird. It's funny. I would have never <laughs> said that before, but nope. I feel like I have time to think. It's like I get to do things that I, I actually, I enjoy. It. I think it's fun. Yeah. It's but I'm not difference. telling anyone else to do the same thing. Right. It's just my personal time. So it's things I do for me that affect my business, but don't necessarily affect other people around me. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the key and starting these, um, bad behaviors. Yeah. So young is awful. And it has to, you know, there, it, there has to be a stop to it at some point and it takes, you know, people like me, hopefully, and you hopefully to start raising awareness around this and stop. Like it's well, not going to be, it's, it's not going to continue to be the fun industry that we we were, I mean, as much as we're complaining about <laughs> some things, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely industry and it's fun and it's interesting and it keeps yeah. you on your toes and it's creative and it's innovative. And yeah, I totally agree. And I think it's one of the things that I was just thinking about that I, is interesting is that I remember when there was the rule where you could never leave the office. You had to be in your desk, right? Ugh. Which I think is the, especially for a salesperson, it drove me crazy crazy I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? I yeah <laughs> i definitely work for companies where unless you were out at a sales call you needed to be at your desk and i just thought that was i mean it was just and i know a lot of people some you know feel the same way that they you know whatever part of theirs is that idea that you have to be in your desk to prove you're working which i think is crazy but the right. good news is that now that we've moved to this remote working People now have gotten over this and realize work and productivity can happen even when you're not sitting at your desk. Right. The next phase will be work and productivity can happen even if it's not between nine and five. Yeah. And if I prefer, like, I'm not a morning person, maybe I start right. at 11 or I do my best work at midnight. Right. Right. You know, like that, that whole time thing has got to go away. Yeah. You know, I get it if you need to connect with people during a certain time. Right. And there's certain meetings. If, sure. Yeah. But if you're creating a strategy deck or you're writing a blog or you're doing something that's from your brain to something, you should be able to do that whenever you want. I agree. As long as you hit the deadline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's still there. But that so I feel like we're moving through this progress, and I really do think that eventually we're going to see more and more of that change. Well, let's think about the fact that the millennials will soon be the bosses. Yes. Imagine what that's going to be like. Yeah, I mean, and they're they're, they already are. That. Yeah, if they're not already, I mean, right? And many of them are. And yeah, you can only hope that they've held on to, <laughs> you know, their values when they came in. And somehow yeah, exactly. fought their way through with staying true to those values and what's important to them. Absolutely. And so that's why, I mean, I'm actually kind of optimistic. Like I'm always optimistic, but I'm really optimistic that the, how we work is going to change. Yeah. And, you know, while I do miss the face to face, I think we've all learned that we can do so much more virtually. Yeah. Um, However, I still miss the face-to-face. -face. I don't know what it is. The face-to-face about... -face needs to come back. Yeah. Because one of the things that's leading to this, you know, special brand of burnout is that lack of being social. Because, you know, while this is okay, it, you don't get all the cues. And you have different screens on still. And like, yeah. you're not fully listening. You're not listening with everything. You know, you're just hearing the words that you want to hear. And then you're kind of making up 
the rest of it as you go because you've got all these other things going on in front of you. So that face-to-face -face is still huge. And one of the things I said in the newsletter yesterday is go out for a walk, you know? Yeah. See if one of your salespeople lives in your, around somewhere where you live and go for a socially distant walk with them. Like, you'll get so much more out of that. Not only will you get more, I mean, just imagine the creativity that comes from movement. Yes, I know. I mean, that's what's so fun about it is that you're right. Like, it doesn't have to be the traditional. I certainly can't wait, though, to have go out to like a lunch again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, I know. I know. But I've been doing the walks and they've been fun. That's awesome. Because yeah, they're, cause they're like that's little true. brainstorm sessions. It's true. That's a really a good idea. I'm doing a bar class tomorrow with some coworkers. Oh, that's I fun. think that'll be fun. <laughs> that'll be fun. <laughs> Those are the things that you need to do. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I will tell you, you know, it's funny. I used to, I, it, I look back now and I think, you know, I loved going out and I loved working at co-working spaces and I never thought I would be in my house all day long and some days never leave. Yeah. And it's funny because now I think back and I think, how did I ever leave my house? Because like, <laughs> I have to be in the car to go do like, there's not enough time in the day sometimes. Isn't and that I funny? think about that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know so how we did it. How you can kind of, but I know that once it happens, which I hopefully is very soon, yeah. you know, new habits will form and we'll get back into the groove of things. Yeah. I Let's all hope. hope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, I mean, it's already like 1236. Oh. I was thinking I would love to follow up and maybe we could take what you wrote in uh, the SF Big and turn it into a blog post. Sure. Yeah. And then we could put it on Athenium Collective and maybe um, share kind of more about our conversation and just some things that people can do. Love to. to yeah, there's so much out. more. <laughs> there's so yeah, much I'd more to, to it. That so we can share. So, you know, people are watching this they can go to athediumcollective.com we have a power up blog and yeah. we'll have a whole thing on burnout there with Good. some more suggestions yeah. yeah love to love to i love it well um i just want to thank you so much for joining thank me you, today Lisa. i'm excited um for those people interested in sales in particular kelly and i are working on a course mm -hmm. uh to help people power up their sales skills uh especially if you're in the media world and you're you know, trying to figure out how to work better with agencies. We want to take a look at that. We have a great survey if people are interested in taking that. Um, just uh, join the Athenium Collective uh, subscriber list and we can send you the survey. So yep. awesome. Thank you. All right. Have a great afternoon. You too. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.